Today's question is, should I have surgery on my lumbar compression fracture? We're talking about fractures due to osteoporosis. In osteoporosis, you have normal bone quality, you just don't have enough bone. In the lumbar spine, you have five vertebral bodies. Each of these bones are shaped like boxes, and the inside of these bones are filled with trabeculi. They're like the struts that maintain the normal shape and alignment of the vertebral body. In osteoporosis, these trabeculi become thinner and thinner until the bone becomes so weak that it collapses. Do you have to have surgery on one of these collapsed bones? No, they will heal naturally without surgery. When should you consider surgery? If you have severe pain that has lasted longer than six weeks, you should consider surgery. If you have pain that is so severe you can't stand up, can't walk, can't get out of bed, you should consider surgery. These fractures occur in elderly individuals and they don't tolerate bed rest well. If you've decided to have surgery, what are the options? There are three common surgeries used for compression fractures, and each has its advantage and disadvantage. The first is the vertebroplasty. In a vertebroplasty, a needle is placed inside the vertebral body, and a very liquid cement is injected in that bag of bones, kind of gluing it all together. It works very well, but one of the disadvantages is the fact that you are injecting a very liquid cement. A liquid cement can travel or embolize or go to someplace else, someplace that you don't want it to go to. It can go into the spinal canal, affecting the nerves, causing paralysis. It can embolize into the bloodstream, going to the brain, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, causing a stroke or a heart attack. When do you use a vertebroplasty? Because it's a needle and it's basically a fancy injection, it can be used in older, sicker individuals that would not be candidates for other procedures. The second procedure is what's known as a kyphoplasty. In a kyphoplasty, a needle is placed into the broken vertebral body. A balloon is deployed to help restore the normal height and alignment of the vertebral body. The balloon is collapsed, and in that void, we inject a very thick cement. It's a thicker cement, so it's less likely to embolize, making the procedure safer, and also we restored some of the height. It is a thicker cement, but it still is cement, so it still can embolize, it's just not as frequently. The final procedure is what's known as the bone kyphoplasty. This is where a needle is placed into the vertebral body, a mesh bag is deployed, that mesh bag is filled with a combination of bank bone and stem cells to restore the normal height and alignment of the vertebral body. The advantages of the bone kyphoplasty are number one, you can more reliably restore the height and alignment of the vertebral body because the mesh bag stays within the vertebral body. You're injecting bone so it will not embolize or go someplace else. In the case of cement, when you inject a large amount of cement into a vertebral body, Cement heats up, and in cases, it can get so hot that it will kill the bone around the cement, and the whole complex can collapse. With bone, you don't get that. When you inject cement, it is very hard, and because that bone with the cement in it is so hard, and the bones around it are soft, it can lead to fracturing the bones on either side of the bone that's been fixed with cement. That doesn't happen if you've fixed a bone with bone. If you fill a bone full of cement, then it's difficult to do any other procedures in the future. For example, you can't put a needle inside that bone. You can't put a screw inside that bone, so you've limited yourself. Once you fill that bone full of cement, that individual may not be able to have certain types of surgery in the future, which can be very important because 
these procedures are done in older populations that are more likely to need surgery. Hopefully that's been useful. Hopefully I answered your questions and you now know what you're gonna do with your compression fracture. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to write. Dr. Smith at ElPasoSpineCenter.com and also, the most important thing, tell your friends to watch and neighbors, give us a like and subscribe. Thank you.